Hello, my name is Rohit and welcome back to Android Reference Implementation Tutorial on Services. Some applications require that they work in the background and do some work for you and notify you. Uh, in Android, if you look at the Gmail client, it automatically notifies you whenever a new email comes. Or let's say you have a VoIP client like Skype. It will notify you when there's an incoming call or a chat message. Similarly, if you are syncing your files uh, using Dropbox in the background, uh, things happen automatically. So, we have seen activities, we have seen uh, services, we have seen broadcast receivers and content providers. Now, while activities are a good way to show you something visual on the screen, they are not long running and they have a life cycle of their own. And the moment activity goes in the background, there is no guarantee that it will keep on running. That's why activity is not a place to do background long running task. That's why Android provides something called as services. Now there's enough documentation on services uh, life cycle but uh, instead of focusing on the life cycle of a services let me explain your service in a very simple manner. Now, let's say there is an activity which wants to inform a service that he, the service needs to download a large file or keep on doing some you know processing in the background. So a service has a life cycle method which starts from on create to on destroy. Uh, so on create is called once and on destroy is called when a service is about to get destroyed. But most importantly there is a method in service called as on start command. Now on start command is called every time an activity or somebody else uh, asks a service to start. A very simple example of how do we start a service is uh, we create an intent. Uh, we can create an explicit intent saying that we want to start a particular service. In the intent, we can put some extra bundles, for example, some name value pairs, for example, an, an action being download a file and data being the URL of the file. And then we say start service, passing with intent. That starts the service. Now, the service is not running, it will uh, run the service the first time, uh, and the on create will get caught. But let's say the service is running. Nonetheless, every time when you say start service, on start command is called, irrespective of whether the service was running or the service was not running. So this means that a way to ask a service to do a background processing is to simply create an intent, pass some name value pair and say start service, which will call on start command of the service each time. In on start command, you can put uh, switch statements, if statements saying that if the action is this and I want to do that, or if the parameter is this and then I want to do something else. So that's how you communicate from an activity to a service. But wait, that's just one way of communication from activity to service. How would a service inform an activity that something is done? Now, while this works, um, we would like to know about some other way where you know we can probably call a service like a RC, RPC call or RMI call and services provide us a method of doing so. Now let's look at this another example. In this example, we are saying that the service is there. The service also implements an interface, our social service interface, which provides uh, us with a method called as get social feed, which returns a list of tweet. Now, in this case, instead of saying start service, you have to say bind to a service. Now, once you say bind to a service, the service is going to return you a Return you an interface of I social service which it implements. Once the activity gets that particular uh, interface, it can just call API calls. And in this case, the communication is two ways because you call an API from um, activity on a service and you get the result back. Now, let's see some examples of how do we do that. So the first example is of uh, when we do start service and it's a one-way communication. Before I go there, I need to also open DDMS logs so that you could see exactly what's happening. Now I'm gonna clear this and I'm gonna come back to the screen. You will say simple service example. Now in this case it's a calculator example. We're gonna add four to zero. And you see the simple service says add four to zero new value is 4. Similarly, if I keep on doing some other additions, 
you will see it works. But the issue with this thing is that the communication is one way. Now let's look at the source code for this. Now in the source code we will first go and see the sub service. Now the way we implemented service in this example is we created a simple service, we extended the service, we have a stateful value in the service, we have what is this function called as on bind. Since we're not binding to the service, it's okay to return null. Then we have got this on create method and an on start command. Notice how I told you the on start command is called each time when you say start service. So in this case, we are getting the action from our name action and data from a uh, key data and all of this information is provided in the intent now if it's add I'm simply adding the value to the local store and if it's delete uh, subtract I'm just saying subtract over here and this is how the service is implemented this is a no-brainer you can implement that but the problem is we're not communicating back to the activity now let's look at the activity now, in the activity, as you can see, we have an add button and a subtract button and an edit text. In the add button, whenever somebody clicks the add button, the way we are implementing this is, we are taking the value from the edit text, which could be anything. Then we are creating a service intent and the service intent is an explicit intent. We are saying that I want to invoke simple service class. And in that, I am putting action as add and data as value. Similarly, under subtract, I'm doing the same thing except the action is subtract. And this is how things work out. Well, this is a good way of asking the service to do something. The problem is how does the service communicate back? Now, either the service puts something in database which uh, which the client can look at or there's a singleton object, but nonetheless, not a very good way of communicating back and front. Now, let's go to another example which is about binding to a service. Here you see a small dose which says service bind successful. I'll tell you about it. But simply said, let's say I want to add 5 to 0. And I can see the result over here as 5. And I want to say add 3. Result comes as 8. And then minus 4. Result comes as 4. Now, in this case, we are seeing that we are getting some we are actually getting the values back because we are using an interface. Let's look at the example about the same. Now if I go to this example called as bind simple, let's look at a class, a file called as AIDL class. Now because services can be in different processes and services, you can access services of different applications as well, this, is, this falls into the category of inter-process communication. And that's why we require the classic uh, stub skeleton thing which we're used to seeing in RMI. Now, the Android way of doing that is to declare um, an interface, which is a typical Java interface, just that we name the class as AIDL instead of Java. And you mention in the interface whatever you want to mention. In this case, we are saying this is a call service, which is add and subtract method, and we are using all primitive data types. So the marshalling and unmarshalling is... Uh, implicit now whenever we declare i cal service aidl please note that in the generated folders you will see a class being actually formed called as i cal service now instead of going into that i'll show you how do we bind to a simple service or how do we declare to a simple service now the simple bind service is an example of that simple bind service implement service and it has an internal state value like before now take a look over here here we are saying iCal service stub is new iCal service stub and then we are actually implementing the stub over here think about this as I'm implementing the iCal service interface inside a server so this is the implementation of iCal service AIDL file 
Now, the stub and all those things, let's not worry too much about it. This is just the internals of how things happen. But this is the implementation. In the implementation, I'm saying if I want to say add, I'm going to add uh, data to the value and it return the new value. Similarly, the subtract. Now, the only thing which we are seeing over here is that in on bind, I'm going to return the i binder. And the i binder is the stub. Simple as that. So this is the implementation of the interface, which we are talking as a stuff. And in the iBinder on bind method, we return the stub. The rest, all the things are pretty simple. Now let's see how are we actually invoking this particular service. So let's go to simple bind service. Now in this case, uh, things are a bit different. The intent stays the same because you the intent is towards this particular service as express intent. But instead of saying start service, you say bind service. Now when you say bind service, you'll pass the intent saying that my intent is to actually bind to this particular server, and you're gonna say that I want to connect to that particular service, and that's why you provide a connection service connection object. I'll come back to that in a moment. And the end you say bind auto create, which means if the service is not running, please created. So let's look at this connection object over here. So connection object uh, is a way in which uh, callbacks can be registered when we are binding to a service. Now remember when a service is not started and you want to bind to the service, the first thing it's going to do it's going to start the service and then bind to it. So this may take some time. That's why we require callback. So service connection is a con is an interface which says that the on service connected method will be called whenever this whenever we connect to the service and on service this method will be called whenever we are disconnecting from the service now notice in the on service connect we are passing the component name as well as the i binder service now this is very exciting now the moment we have this i binder service i can create an object of the i cal service so here I say I call service stub as an interface and I pass the service. Now I get the object of I call service. I can call methods on this. Interesting thing is what we're doing in this example is we are first of all binding to the service and once the bind is successful, we go to register UI event handler. Here is where we actually registering the callbacks to the um, click handlers of the button because we don't want a person to click on the buttons. Uh, before the service is connected. Now since the service is connected, all we have to do is simply say service.add value value and you get the information back. The same thing we are doing 